Well, hello, Shoreline. This is your devotional for Friday, May 1st. And yes, May 1st. We are into May now, and some of the challenges are still with us here. Hopefully, we're getting glimmers of some good news and hopeful thoughts as we go forward. But one of the passages in the Bible, uh, one of the Psalms that some people have sent to me, and kind of certainly, especially a couple verses they really like uh, particularly well, um, is Psalm 91. We're, we're in the 90s now with the Psalms. And I want to tell you that this entire psalm is inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's true, but I want you to listen to the entire psalm. I'm going to read every word of this psalm. And I want you to get the big picture of how God watches over us, protects us, but also the reality that hard times come and our strength is not that we don't struggle. Our strength is that God is with us in the hard times. That's kind of the capstone at the end of the psalm. It's kind of building this climax of just letting us know God is with us. So listen to Psalm 91. Let the Holy Spirit touch your heart. And don't just grab one or two verses. Get the heartbeat of the entire psalm. And I believe God will speak to you in a powerful way. Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrows that fly by the day. I love that. Night and day, you don't have to be afraid nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but, you, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. That 10th verse is the one that people love to quote and put on plaques. No harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. But be careful to take one verse out of the whole psalm. Let's get the whole picture of what's going on here. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Man, a lot of victory there. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him. Now God is speaking. I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. Now listen to this. I will be with him in trouble and deliver him and honor him. God says, I will be with him. I will be with her in their trouble. I'll be with you in your moment of trouble. He's not saying there's no trouble. He's saying the greatest thing is I'm with you when it comes. With, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Man, there's a lot going on in this psalm. I want to just share a few thoughts with you. First is this, dwell in his shelter. Dwell in the shadow of his wings. Let God watch over you. Man, when you're feeling the pressure, say, God, just put your covering over me. Watch over me. The beauty is that in the storm, he protects us. The Bible doesn't say you'll never suffer and you'll never struggle. You can find a couple of verses that seem to imply that, but when you read them in context, you realize there's a bigger picture. There's a, there's a picture that whatever you're going through, ultimately, it pales in comparison to the glory of God and his love for you. Also, the psalm lets us know you don't have to walk in fear. Whatever you walk through, day or night, you don't have to walk in fear if you walk with Jesus, if he's present, if God, Yahweh, God Almighty is with you. I love the picture that his angels will watch over you. We're going through the book of Daniel in our Sunday morning services. And in the, the sixth message in the series on Daniel, we're going to talk about angelic beings who watch over nations and watch over, I mean, the book of Daniel has this uh, apocalyptic, beautiful imagery and pictures. But one of the things is there's a spiritual battle going on and that angels are actually real and at work. I believe that's true. You want to know I believe that? The Bible says it. I believe it's true. So God, there's a way that God watches over us. God, he sends, and the word angel just means messenger. He sends messengers to protect his children. Great news. But here's the confusing and challenging part of this psalm, of Psalm 91. Part of it seems to say, hey, no harm and no trouble is going to come your way. Another part says, I'll be with you in your trouble. Which is it? Well, the answer is it's both. In a very real, real sense, God says, the trouble you have in this world is small compared to the glory of what awaits you. But when you do face those times that, that feel massive now, 
And one day we'll feel small, but they're, but they're real and they're deep. And no one belittles those struggles we have. But God says, here's the beauty. I am with you whatever you go through. That's our hope. That's our strength. He's our stronghold, whatever we face. And so, Lord Jesus, this is our prayer. That this, this 91st Psalm, in all of its beauty, would speak to our hearts. That we would know that there are moments when we, we don't experience pain or struggle because you protect us. There's moments that you send an angelic beings to watch over us and spare us. We praise you for that. And there are times where we look and say, boy, nothing's touching me. This is wonderful. But Lord, when there are times that touch us, when there is pain and struggle, we praise you that you are with us and we are never alone. Let us walk in that confidence. Let us walk in your strength. Let us know that we live in the shelter and the shadow of your wing. God Almighty, our Savior, our Protector, our Redeemer, and our Friend, we give you praise. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Dr. Rick Alexander, the Vice President of our Church Board, is going to share a few thoughts, kind of give the update of what's happening in, in, in Monterey County, and know that he's sharing with you as a brother in Christ, as someone who loves Jesus. So take a few minutes and listen to what Rick has to share with you. Hey, Shoreliners. Well, this week on Tuesday, Governor Gavin Newsom in his news conference, introduced a framework by which our shelter-in-place order will be lifted. It consists of four separate phases, and I'd like to go over a few of the aspects with you. Stage one is where we are now as we continue to build out our testing, contact tracing, personal protective equipment, and hospital surge capacity. We need to continue to make essential workplaces as safe as possible. We also will prepare sector-by-sector sector safety guidelines for expanded workforce. Stage two, which is expected to occur within the next few weeks, will involve gradually opening some lower-risk workplaces with adaptations. Retail spaces will be offering curbside pickup. Essential manufacturing will be opening up, as well as offices where telework is not possible. In addition, we'll be opening up more public spaces, such as public parks, county parks, state parks, and beaches, which are currently closed. The governor also talked about expanding the workforce safety net, which involves wage replacement so workers can stay home when sick. An important question is, when are we ready for stage two? I might mention that stage two represents schools and childcare facilities, which are essential in getting us back to work. Well, we have to meet some key indicators before moving on to stage two, and this includes hospitalization and ICU trends continuing to be stable, which they have been. We wanna make sure hospitals are ready to meet the capacity should there be a surge, and that we have sufficient personal protective equipment supply to meet that demand. The last two points we're continuing to work on, one is sufficient testing capacity to meet demand and contact tracing capacity statewide. Now transition two will occur through a statewide modification to the stay at home order, rather than a comprehensive lifting all at once. An important point to make is that the state will be working closely with county healthcare facilities as different counties will be opening up at different rates. This slide represents stage three and stage four. In stage three, which is expected to be more than a month away, and stage four, which will be several months away, we see the following. In stage three, we'll open up higher risk environments with adaptations and limits on size of gatherings. This includes personal care, such as hair and nail salons, as well as gyms, entertainment venues, movie theaters, and sports without live audiences, and for Shoreline, most importantly, our churches. In stage four, we're going to end the stay at home order. We'll reopen high risk workplaces with all indicators satisfied once therapeutics have been developed. Now, I interpret that as meaning a vaccine, although that was not specifically specified in the announcement. But this will include concerts, convention centers, and live audience sports. And I can guarantee we're all gonna be looking forward to that. As you can see in this graph, 
Not only are we flat, but we're continuing to decrease in the number of new cases. The uptick that's seen on 4-10-2020 involved a group of farm workers in Salinas that were identified and followed and tracked very carefully. Uh, since that time, we've seen a significant decline in the number of cases, and we've continued to show very few new cases as the days have gone by. For a county of over 400,000, this number of COVID cases is remarkable. One closing comment I would like to make today is that these numbers are not simply statistics or data points. They represent real people, people that have been affected by COVID-19 and have families and friends. Let's keep these people in our thoughts and please pray for them. And remember to follow the County Health Department guidelines. Staying safe saves lives. I look forward to talking with you next week. God bless you.